Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Little Big Adventure 2, Twin Sins Odyssey. Last time we escaped the planet Zealish, breaking out of jail and coming back to uh, Twin Sin here. Zoe immediately called us to tell us that things were wrong. Uh, she told us that the downtown, at the baggage claim, uh, Baldino left us a package. We don't know what's in it. I can't remember if she told us or not. But, uh, there was another problem. Yeah. Esmer's. Yeah, trust in our friendship. Told you to didn't trust him. But we also saw these two guys outside our neighbor's house. Now, we haven't previously had a reason to go in here, so I never came and talked to him. But we're gonna do that now, we'll make sure he's okay. Or if he's still even there, he might even be dead. But he's not! So let's see what he has to say. Hello, neighbor. Hello, Twinson. I'm still busy with my son's documents here. Everybody seems to be terrorized by these two costumed strangers. At my age, one has seen worse. Well, living through the tyranny of Fun Frock will do that to you. Uh, he also has a picture of us above his bed. I guess we are the hero of the planet. Oh yes, that's another thing. We're back, uh, we're back on a planet where we're the hero and we can do whatever we want. So let's check out this thing he's got on his table. Hey, this looks like a map, but I can't read it. Here, we have a very instructive map of the sewers. Before you can consult it, you must wait until I restore it. For that, I need a vial of gallic acid. Unfortunately, there's none left on the island. Well, good thing there was some on Desert Island. We can finally use that. Oh, and another thing I should mention. Uh, Zlitos has now become an item in place of where the caches were. That's just so it can remember that we had them when when we obviously returned to Zealish. I'm sorry. Yes, that's exactly what I needed. I'm going to use it on the map of the sewers. He's going to slowly make his way over there. Stand and watch. So his son was in the first game. I don't remember him, because I don't think I got that far. But he was there. The Gallic Acid has revealed a text previously invisible. It mentions a small pyramid that was in my possession. Here, it's yours. Your neighbor just gave you a pyramid-shaped key. Okay, so let's take a look at the map that he restored. Now yeah, that's restored. In the secret room, in the center of the sewers, there is an enchanted globe. The weather wizard put it there. According to him, it has to do with the prophecy of Sendel. I preferred to lock this room. It can be opened only with the small pyramid. Okay, so there we see the mark of Sendel there. We've been down there before. We fell through the the hole in the cafe and ended up down there. Uh, you can see in the bottom left there's the infinity symbol or glasses or two circles, whatever. Uh, we know that that leads to the, uh, the weather wizard's hut. You can see there's two arrows at the top. Those are both doors, neither of which we've used. Maybe we will. Oh, and our, uh, our magic slate has been updated. So you can see there, we can refer back to that map at any time. Handy, I suppose. But judging judging from all of this, the cafe is probably heavily guarded. And if you remember before, there was a note in the Weather Wizard's hut saying that we had to go get the Pearl of Incandescence at Desert Island. So presumably that might have something to do with what he wants us to do. Or what he might have wanted us to do with that Mark Ascendal in the sewers. We don't know if that's actually for us or not. I'm assuming it is, we're here on the planet, why not? Now that thing, I'm gonna call it a frog walker. In where the frog walker wanders around, it's covered with mines, so dodging through there is not an option. The thing itself also has the two guns, which are very powerful. That guy's gonna give us trouble, the dogs are gonna give us trouble. Essentially we just have to make a break for it. They can injure each other. That's one thing. That's another entrance to the sewers. You can hop on that grate and go down. We won't right now. We don't need to. We should 
probably check out the school. Joe mentioned that the children of Twinson had something to do with, with Zealish, and she does look quite upset. What happened, Miss? The children were, we were at the flower circle, and suddenly one of those alien ships showed up right overhead. There was this big white flash, and then nothing. Next thing I remember, I found myself alone. The children nowhere in sight, and the ship was taking off. <laughs> it's horrible, Mr. Twins, and you have to find them. You have to. This music is far too cheery for this terrible news. Oh dear. Alright, so the children are gone. And apparently there's a Sphero there that I've never seen before and we will never see. Unfortunate. Uh, we never actually looked at this, so we'll read this now. Representation of our planet, Twin Sun, in stable orbit between two suns. So there you go, that's why it's called Twin Sun, because of the Twin Suns. Now, that, that shows us a disturbing image. There is not a whole lot we can do about it right now. And yes, re abusing the recoil avoiding system. Ah, Mr. Twins. Your friend Baldino left me a crate for you. It's in the basement, a brown crate with a big label on top. Just follow the arrow, bring it back here, and I'll open it. If you need help, ask my colleagues downstairs. Ah, uh, this part of the game. This is a part of the game that really slows you down and a lot of people don't seem to like. Because it's essentially a box pushing puzzle. Now, I have recorded this before. Um, so, I'm going to ask his colleagues to help us. But first, we have to push this little magnet flying thing around. Well, it's not really a magnet, I don't... There's no real indication of how this thing works. It just it knows which one is your package, and it can only pick up that package. Now clearly, that one has a picture on it, so it must be ours. So there it goes, magically picking up our package. So now, it's... This bit isn't too difficult, it really doesn't need explanation. Push it up against the wall, push it to the right. And there, we'll never see that thing again, we never have to think about it again, it is gone. Now, pushing boxes in this game is not the greatest system. As you can see, I can sort of turn all the way around. Oh dear. You can also push it like this, where you're not even really pushing it. But this is one of the guy's colleagues. We'll get back to him in a moment. So you push the box along here, the arrows that you see will push your box away. If they're pointing, they don't actually move or anything, they just make a sound. You want to be careful of that blue thing, it will push your box, and then you have to retrieve it from up top. The second one doesn't seem to work though. Uh, this guy's kind of a jerk. I mean, he is one of the other guy's colleagues, but he doesn't help. So we'll never see him again. He's gone. That door was clearly locked because you saw a little pee hole on there. Uh, so this is actually at 400 times speed. So we're going to pay this guy to do it for us. He's just lying around, why not? Hi. Hey, 
Mister, if you want, I can carry your crate up to the exit for one hundred and those little cashies. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's that's a lot of money. Okay, go back up the stairs. You'll get your crate. I'm sending it directly to the reception. Well, that's handy. So we can leave that with him. We don't need to be down here anymore. That solves that puzzle really quick. Look at that. Yeah, victory jump. Yes. Apparently I can still move that thing around. It's news to me. So that's much faster way of doing it. At this point in the game, you might not have 102 caches. You see, we're back down to 40. But there's really not a lot... Oh, jeez. There's really not a lot you'd be using caches for at this point in the game. Anyway. And that sound was him opening our package for us before we even got there. What a jerk. Let's see if he's gonna talk to us about it. No, he's just gonna walk like that. Alright! Go ahead, Mr. Huh. Twinson. It's your property, isn't it? You just found the proto-pack. Put it on, and you'll fly a few inches above the ground. Yes, only a few inches above the ground. There it is, the proto-pack. Twinson did mention this while we were at Baldino's. As you can see, comes this jetpack. Hover around like this. Slowly. Cannot really move faster. This is dodging around with the jetpack. Even that sorta of doesn't make you go faster. So not exceedingly useful as of yet, it seems. At least in this combined quarters. Uh, other ways you can access it quickly are is pressing J on the keyboard, or if you're holding down, uh, if you're holding open the menu for the behaviors, you can go up and down, just like with the Horn of Trident, which I might use, and the Proto Pack. So let's replenish some health for a run up there. We are going to get hurt. Now, what the Proto Pack actually functions as is a method of getting you over water, as Twinson cannot swim himself. You see. So he uses that instead to get around over water. Otherwise he will drown. It's not, you know, you can't use it in a fight or anything. But okay, so we've gone to the baggage claim. Our only other goal is to go back to White Leaf Desert. We know we also have to get a pro of incandescence there, but the School of Magic, we need to see them. Now the fairy's gone. But we do have Dino Fly. This guy over here, I should mention, we cannot actually hurt him. See the fact that he's red and our ball is green. Yeah, no stars. I should also like to mention that this brown fishbowl is the only unique fishbowl in the game. All the others are gray. Don't know why. Ooh. Yeah, that was smart of me. Sometimes when you, uh... Avoid the recoil by, you know, pressing the hotkey. The enemies will mess up. That's interesting. But next time we will be taking Dino Fly off on our adventures to Desert Island. I will see you then. Something just got attacked over there.